Sports Radio. Pens and Flyers, I know what I'm doing tonight. <laughs> Watching a hockey game. And tomorrow, by the way, Alex Doherty of OnTheForeCheck.com joins me, your voice of choice, Marky Bilson. The Predators have won nine in a row, hottest team in the NHL. We cover them better than anybody in a Tri-Cities right here. So that's why we're having him on. Mike Fisher's back. Big time. Could the Predators bring home Tennessee's first major professional sports championship? That's the question here. Hello, everybody. I'm Marky Bilson, your voice of choice for a new generation of Tri-City sports fans. The name of the program is Tri-City Sports Now, and we own the Tri-Cities because we've got the best guests and the hardest-hitting opinions in the market. Of course, we've been all over the SoCon tourney. Going to be looking at, I'm trying to do a little more with the SEC tourney coming up. Still don't quite understand how, you know, and I know the Big East is not what it once was, but it used to be, remember, Big East tournament concluded Saturday night. Sunday afternoon, you had the ACC tournament and then the selection show, which famously, I, I can actually remember back in the 90s when WJHL decided that, well, that shouldn't be carried live. We've got a newscast right now at 6, right? and they would cut into it at 6.30. That was always, you know, you just said, what a great sports area we live in here now. You know, that was always the uh, take that we got of that. But I will say this, uh, we will be, you know, that's how it used to happen. You used to have the ACC, now it's the ACC is Saturday night, and the SEC tournament concludes on Sunday afternoon. Hmm. SEC tournament, historically, there have been a few more upsets with that, I think, than the ACC. I can remember ACC upsets, don't get me wrong, but you know, the idea, I can remember 10 years ago, uh, Georgia uh, making the NCAA tournament because they won the SEC tournament, and otherwise they would not have made it. They got a 14 seed in the tourney, the NCAA tourney. Which, all right. But anyway, and uh, later on today, 1.15, I'm going to be talking to Matthew Marshall. He's a sports writer for the Orlando Sentinel. He just ranked the top, well, not the top, but all the SEC teams by virtue of their quarterback position. In other words, this is the program with the best quarterback position uh, situation coming into the season. This is the second best. This is the worst. I'll give you a preview. Because of Keller Christ, Tennessee, he is rated, is having the fifth best quarterback situation going into 2018. I was surprised about that. I was surprised that he took Keller Christ ahead of two quarterbacks that I'm very high on in the SEC East, but now perhaps optimism for Tennessee for 2018 that otherwise wasn't there. Keller Chris could be big. That could be. I I realize at Stanford, he didn't have the yards per pass attempt. His completion percentage was 55, 54 percent, something like that. But 19 to 6 TD to interception ratio. And to tell you the truth. If you ask me what my gut is, I think he's the starting quarterback against West Virginia and Charlotte to kick off the season next September. I, you know I me; mean? I'm not a big Guarantano McBride guy. All right. But what I want to begin with is something I didn't have a chance to get to. It was a late-breaking story yesterday, and it was yesterday we learned that in all likelihood, two high school football coaches are not coming back and two very good high school football coaches in the area. I'm speaking, of course, of Graham Clark, who coached uh, the winningest program in all of Tennessee, the Dobbins-Bennett Indians. And because I know on my Facebook page right now, I've got some people from my old hometown of Pittsburgh uh, uh, tuning in, I will say he coached Cody Sensabaugh. That's right, the Steelers defensive back in high school. But uh, Graham Clark who I always enjoyed talking to, is stepping down after about a quarter century at the helm of the Dobbins Bennett Indians. The Indians, although the Maryville Fighting Maryville, not the Fighting Scots, that's the college, but Maryville is on their tail to be the all-time winningest high school football team 
in Tennessee. I think nationally, Dobbins Bennett, I looked it up this morning, is 29th all-time. Valdosta is 918 lifetime victories. Uh, Dobbins Bennett is 766. Okay, so there you go. Right to the minute right there. But I know that Maryville is probably going to overtake Dobbins Bennett unless Dobbins Bennett starts winning the way that they used to. But still, Clark uh, won more games at Dobbins Bennett than any coach they ever had there. Uh, the the one big name coach I thought in Dobbins Bennett history was a guy named Ed Shockey, who went on to become part of the administration at West Virginia, and was part of the administration actually that uh, aided their transition from the Southern Conference to becoming an independent, I believe, in the 70s. And this is the Bobby Bowden era at West Virginia, and then eventually uh, going into uh, the Eastern Eight the Atlantic 10, and eventually now the Big 12. Uh, Big East, obviously, was also part of that as well. Now, Shockey by that time was long gone, but if you're looking for a historic coach that, you know, made it big or so, I thought that uh, that was somebody in their history at Dobbins Bennett that, uh, yeah, turned out to be uh, kind of an interesting, uh, you know, an interesting hire that went on to bigger and better things as, a, as an administrator, but from the coaching staff, if you will. Anyway, what, the, the Clark retirement was met with positive results or, or positive karma, I guess is what I should say. He never took the Indians to the state championship. We'll all give him that. And the Indians, of course pride themselves on the state championships that they've won. But the dirty little secret about Dobbins Bennett is though they do have the most victories in Tennessee, uh, their last state title, which was 64, this was before there was integration in Tennessee athletics, Tennessee high school athletics. And so that's the dirty little secret there. And if you actually look at when, you know, integration came into Tennessee athletics, Tennessee high school athletics. It's at that time that the Tri-Cities teams basically stopped winning championships. So there have been a few. Greenville, obviously, if you want to call them Greenville, and I feel that they are part of the Tri-Cities. It's part of the media market. Come on. You know, what is it? 30 miles south of Johnson City, 23 or so. I think it's 20. I think it's 30 miles south of Johnson City on 321, 23 uh, south of, of Jonesboro, if memory serves. But regardless, uh, you're talking about here a, you know, that, that since that time, the Tri-Cities teams have met, uh, well, they don't have the advantage anymore. It's that, that simple, and uh, thankfully they don't have the advantage anymore. Tennessee High won a state championships back in the early 70s. There's a lot of players that actually went on to play at Tennessee, University of, and some other places as well. Uh, Cloudland played for a Class A title back in 2002. They didn't win it. Uh, but other than that, and of course, there were the uh, state championships that uh, Science Hill won on the men's hardwood back in the 90s, three of them. Talked about that a little bit before. I'm ranting. And now there's a chance tonight that Daniel Boone, their women, now they're beginning in the state finals today over in the middle part of the state. You know, that Perhaps they could go on and win a state championship uh, the way that, say, in a previous era, South Green. South Green won it last year in women's basketball. Traditional powerhouse there. And then, of course, North Green, Green County again, playing for a Class A championship uh, in Murfreesboro in the days ahead. But really, you know, since then, I mean, I could go into state, and I'm ranting and raving now. Sullivan South won the baseball championship in 87 here out of the tri city So there have been some, but in football, not so many. I've been two schools in the last 50 years, Tennessee High and Greenville, from the area win state titles. And Clark never, you know, restored Dobbins Bennett to that level. And maybe it's not in the cards because it is, after all, what, a city of about 50,000? How many people now in Kingsport? About 50,000, I think. And they, you know, you're going up against, you know, Bearden. And you're going up against, you know, the White Station out in Memphis and all that. Bigger areas, you know, that sort of thing. But... 
he did win more games than any other coach. And that should be said. And he also had the pipeline of players in the NFL. Cody Sensabaugh, and of course, Gerald Sensabaugh, and more. But let's just fade you know, Teddy Gaines. But let's just fade, focus on these two right now. Because the other coach that in all likelihood is not going to return to his high school next season is, of course, Gerald Sensabaugh, late of the Dallas Cowboys and Jacksonville Jaguars and a Dobbins Bennett grad. And we know what the circumstances are, uh, the investigation that's been going on since October. Uh, law firm Ensley Baker and Shade essentially came to the conclusion uh, yesterday, Sensabaugh was not a nice guy, so he should be fired. The fact that Sensabaugh in seven games probably proved to be the best football coach David Crockett has ever had in their history dating back to 1971, that's irrelevant. And why? Well, as a for he's a former NFL defensive back, and by golly, he used profanity around his players. Oh, the horrors! Now, for the record, I don't condone that kind of behavior. They are high school kids, uh, high school players. Uh, you know, you wouldn't put up with a social studies teacher that says, and over here is blankety blank Russia, and down here is blankety blank Italy. You wouldn't put up with that. I get that. So why, if a coach is a instructor of his own sort, and he is, would you put up with that in high school coaching? I get that. This is the Bible Belt. It's not inner city Chicago. No, I, I understand. I understand, okay? I don't condone such behavior. In another market, I worked at a larger market, in fact. Northeastern market, where they cost more. <gasps> I once talked to a very successful coach in his sport about his use of profanity around his high school athletes. And what I did is I appealed to his intellect. And you know what? He stopped using profanity around his players when I appealed to his intellect. Or at least when I was around covering the team, I never heard it again. And, uh, you don't have to use it. But the thing is, it's not a reason to terminate a coach. No way. Frankly, if the smoking gun is that Sensabaugh used profanity during a fiery talk on the team bus during, after a scrimmage, and he said... I didn't use profanity afterwards. My guess is he simply doesn't remember it. I mean, we're talking about a guy who played a decade in the National Football League, where players complained when penalties for using slurs during a game were contemplated. Remember that a few years ago? Oh, you can't penalize the players for using slurs? It's a like, you know, field of battle. Come on. You can't give them the 15 yards there. Remember that? And we're not talking about profanity. We're talking about slurs. But the NFL, you could, you know, no big deal. Hey, part of the game. And that's where Sensabaugh is coming from. Now, you'd think whipping his team up into shape after a very disappointing preseason performance by using some salty language is something the vast majority of players from the NFL are probably going to do, and they're not even going to think about it for two seconds. So I did see, you know, the report in the uh, paper here, Johnson City Press, uh, you know, that sort of thing. And uh, here we go. Report calls for coaches ouster. Putting it up here on Facebook for those of you watching on Facebook. And... You know, the quote that he uses in here is not really, I don't, you know, it, it comes off like John Kerry, to tell you the truth here. And uh, here's what he said. I forgot about, I am expressing disappointment in the performance of my team after a scrimmage during the preseason. This is what Sunsabaugh says. I forgot about this moment, and I honestly never intended to lie about my profanity. I always admitted I used profanity. You know, that sounds a little like John Kerry. You know, I voted... For the bill before I was for the bill before I voted against it. You know, I, I do get that, you know, but uh, still, we're talking about a football coach using some salty language. And that's the smoking gun that the Washington County school system seems to want to try to get sense of on. Really? Really? 
You know, if it was that big of a deal, why didn't they fire him right then? So they let him coach seven games. Look, I realize it's going to be real difficult for Sensaba to return to David Crockett. I mean, first you got this law firm saying you shouldn't. But second of all, intentionally or not, bridges have been burned. And let me ask you this. How could Sensaba be successful after accusing athletic director Josh Kite of offering him drugs, and then after an investigation there, seeing Kite return to his position as David Crockett athletic director. That's the thing, ultimately, I think that's going to do in Sensabaugh. I mean, I can't see somebody working under another guy under that environment, can you? And although, you know, we don't know what happened. I know there was an investigation, but ultimately that comes down to your, your word against mine. So, you know... I hope Sensabaugh is mistaken. I think Kite has a good athletic background, former minor league baseball player. It's the sort of guy I like to see as an athletic director. Uh, you know, and all the, I don't know what went on. Neither do you. Hopefully Sensabaugh is mistaken, you know. But, uh, you know, it's going to be his word against uh, Kite's, and it's not going to win that battle, you know. So the investigation, if you don't have any solid proof, you know, video or something, uh, you're not going to be able to, you know, make that stick in all likelihood. But there are other circumstances, though, that make me want to support Sensabaugh. And really, it's the whole circumstance. It's the reason I got people uh, emailing me, hey, let me tell you what really goes on there in Jonesboro. I got people, uh, you saw a four-hour rally of former players, uh, in support of Sensabaugh, you saw players last season when the Pioneers were 5-2 and two, and then finished 5-6 and six when they didn't have Sensabaugh anymore. But, you know, when were the Pioneers ever 5-2? and two? This is David Crockett. They go 1-9 and nine every year. They're 5-2 and two with a former NFL player from the Dallas Cowboys coaching them. Come on. You know, I think that with that, you say, you know, modern methods and hard methods, you know, maybe we do that. And if it's, you know, some salty language, you know, yeah, you can't. Hey, Gerald, you know, you're a college grad, North Carolina. You really got to use that. You know, this is David, this is David Crockett. This is Jonesboro. We're, you know, and uh, we want to know your, your modern methods of teaching football. But, you know, can you say darn, in, you know, instead, you know? <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. You're an intellectual guy. You can come up with, you don't have to use that. You appeal to that. Probably ain't going to use it anymore, is he? But this is what I see. And it's hard to ignore this. Sensabaugh comes into a sleepy Bible Belt town of, what, 2,700, 3,000, whatever, David Crockett. And I know they actually draw from, you know, the Washington County area around Jonesboro, but, you know, it's a small area. Sensabaugh is a year removed from the NFL, and he issues public and valid concerns about the antiquated and counterproductive open classrooms in the school systems. What's our football coach doing saying that? And that ruffles feathers, even though maybe some feathers need to be ruffled. Because I know that those open school systems don't work. It's antiquated. It was tried 50 years ago. It didn't work. 35 years ago, I changed schools. I went from, you know, closed, single-room, old-fashioned school classroom to those open classrooms. I went from going and being in advanced classes on the honor roll to... I say that. I think I got some C's in fifth grade. So I recall my final report card in fifth grade had two A's, two B's, and two C's. Okay? In advanced classes, if, they, if I recall. And I went to sixth grade. We had the open classrooms. I went to sixth grade in North Carolina from Huntington, Pennsylvania. And uh, I flunked science. I remember how distracting it was. It's a horrible way to teach. Sensabaugh's calling it out. Good for him. Good for him. I support him on that. But yeah, can you see where that's going to ruffle some feathers and then they're going to look for anything? Why, he swore on the team bus. We have video of it. You see where they're going to, you know, try to make it a little bit tough on a coach that wins, on a coach that, well, let's face it, he's young, he has more money than his co-workers in Washington County school system. He's outspoken and he's black. He's not only not from the old guard, He's threatening to them. 
There's more talk about Gerald Sunsaba being rude than there is the fact the school system is still using the open classroom structure that I talked about. The bottom line is Sensabaugh is likely going to be fired after a successful tenure as a high school coach for speaking truth to power. And I don't think that's right. And with rising junior Cade Larkins already entrenched as one of the area's best quarterbacks, would you rather have a former NFL player or a local yokel guide him as a coach to a potential college scholarship? There's no question you'd rather have the, rather you'd rather have the NFL player, even if he uses a few four-letter words. Ooh. Look, Graham Clark retires. Heck, Dobbins Bennett needs a new coach. Looks like Sensaba is going to be available, so why not hire one of their own? Really, I'm serious about this. Frankly, the Indians have been down the last five years under Graham Clark. They've lost their upper hand in the area to Science Hill, if not Greenville, if not Maryville, but certainly they have to Science Hill. So why not hire someone who can continue that Dobbins-Bennett pipeline to the NFL, because he's been a part of it. He might be the most successful player in recent times from it. And besides, don't you think those guys up Dobbins-Bennett, they like to stick it to Washington County when they can? Hey, I'm Marky e. Bilson. That's the way I look at things. Remember, next hour, Matthew Marshall, he's going to rank the quarterback situations in the SEC. We come back. What's all this talk about why is Steve Forbes getting all this money? Uh, he deserves it. And uh, for that matter, uh, could there be, ooh, the cardinal sin of what I think, that high school coach getting a major college job? If so, I think that might be doomed to failure, but we'll see. This one might be, you know, sort of from that John Thompson mode, not that George Pitts mode. Tri-City Sports now coming back after this.